In this video, we're going to derive a Maxwell relation starting from the enthalpy. Alright, so we're in the middle of a series of videos in which we're try trying to derive a Maxwell relations between thermodynamic variables starting from fundamental thermodynamic equations of state functions that we know, like uh, internal energy, enthalpy, Gibbs energy, and Helmholtz energy. In the prior video, we have looked at how this is done for the internal energy, and we have the result of that Maxwell relation right here. In this video, we move to the enthalpy and see what is it that we can learn about relationships between variables uh, starting from that enthalpy. Okay, so we don't have a thermodynamic equation yet for enthalpy, but we're going to derive one. Once we have that uh, thermodynamic equation for enthalpy, then we will compare it to the total differential of the enthalpy with respect to the natural variables. And then from there on, we will work out the second derivatives, just uh, exploiting the fact that enthalpy is a state function and that will give rise to our Maxwell relation. All right, so let's go through each of one of those, those steps in turn. All right, the definition of enthalpy, which we used, used in the first law, is just the internal energy uh, plus the pressure of the, uh, the, plus the product of the pressure and the volume. All right, let's take first derivative of this, total first derivatives. So this is going to be uh, the internal energy, P differential of V, and then V differential of P. All right, those are the total derivatives of this enthalpy expression. Now we're going to invoke the first law of thermodynamics for a reversible process in which no non-expansion work can be made. That means that the only type of work that we're, we're going to try to extract out of this process would be through expansion. All right, so uh, from there, we get uh, differential of Q reversible plus differential of work reversible, where again, this would only be expansion uh, work, P differential of V plus V differential of pressure. All right, uh, next we're going to uh, try to replace these values uh, with useful thermodynamic quantities. Okay, so from our work with the second law, we know that that is uh, true, right? Uh, the differential of the reversible heat is just temperature differential of entropy, and then for a reversible uh, uh, process in which the only work available would be expansion, then that simply is minus the external differential of V plus pressure differential of volume plus volume differential of pressure. All right, so let's look at this term. Uh, because this is reversible, that means that the external pressure equals to the to internal pressure. So you have a mechanical equilibrium throughout. And what that means is that that is the case. Uh, that allows us to cancel this term, and then uh, this gives rise to the fundamental equation of uh, enthalpy, in, in which we have a very simple, very compact dependence of uh, enthalpy on variables, entropy and pressure, that we're going to call the natural variables. All right, so let's uh, uh, write that at the very top, because we're going to have to continue working through that all right, so the fundamental equation for enthalpy will be as follows. Temperature differential of entropy plus volume differential of pressure. Okay, very good then. Again, what that means is that uh, the state function entropy, sorry, enthalpy, it has uh, two natural variables, uh, entropy and pressure. What we do next is look at this function and then take total derivatives. All right, so the total derivative of that function is going to be, well, the sum of the first derivative of the enthalpy with respect to the first variable, entropy, with the other variable, frozen. And then uh, the first derivative of the function with respect to the second variable, pressure, with the first variable, frozen, and, and entropy, differential of P. All right, great. So comparison of the fundamental equation for enthalpy with the total derivative of enthalpy with respect to the natural variables allows us to see interesting relationships, right? So the temperature happens to be the first derivative of the enthalpy with respect to entropy at constant pressure, and then the volume allows us to see, uh, and the volume is equal to the first derivative of the enthalpy with respect to pressure at constant entropy. All right, very good. We have those interesting uh, relationships there, but that's not yet our Maxwell relation. To get to the Maxwell relation, we simply now have to look at the second derivatives, because again, a condition for a state function is that it's path independent. 
That means that uh, when you're changing, uh, 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 when you're doing a process and you're looking at how that uh, state function is changing, the path uh, uh, for the change actually doesn't matter to the difference uh, between the final state and the initial state for that state function. Okay, and that is coded in this second derivative work. All right, so let's take a look at it uh, a little bit carefully there. What that means is that again, the second derivative of the enthalpy with respect to uh, what we're going to do first, uh, pressure, then entropy. This has to be the same as the second derivative of the enthalpy with respect to entropy, then pressure. Mm -hmm. Again, these two things have to be the same if enthalpy is a state function, and we know that enthalpy is a state function. So this is what, what, what it's going to give us a Maxwell relation. All right, so let's see how this unfolds. Notice that what you're doing here is taking First, the derivative of the enthalpy with respect to the entropy at constant pressure, and to that, you take the first derivative with respect to pressure at constant entropy. Right? So that is the last first derivative that you have to take at constant entropy, and the first one would be with respect to entropy. So the first derivative of the enthalpy with respect to entropy at constant pressure. Okay, That's how this unfolds. So the same thing here for the other path. Right, so we'll have that the last first derivative to take would be with respect to entropy, constant pressure, and then that would be the first derivative of the enthalpy with respect to the pressure at constant entropy. All right, great. So let's see if we can identify here terms that are known. Okay, notice that this first derivative is exactly that one, which uh, we have demonstrated is equal to the temperature. Right, so all this turns into simply the first derivative of temperature with respect to uh, pressure at constant entropy. Okay, and for this one, we know that uh, that first derivative is right here, and that is equal to the volume. So then that turns into the first derivative of the volume with respect to uh, entropy at constant pressure. These two uh, first derivatives need to be the same, and that is your Maxwell relation. Okay, so let's write it here to the side. Uh, first derivative of temperature with respect to pressure at constant entropy is equal to the first derivative of volume with respect to entropy at constant pressure. And this is the Maxwell relation obtained from the enthalpy. Okay, so uh, we're done with this uh, derivation, and again, it's, it might not be obvious what these Maxwell relations are good for. Okay, well, uh, uh, for starters, we can see that this is very interesting, right? Those are relations that uh, would be impossible to think of just right off the bat, right? We know what uh, we know what temperature is, we know what pressure is, we know what entropy is, but uh, we would have never thought that this uh, relation should be equal to that, right? That's something that is not obviously apparent from any of our knowledge of thermodynamics. It's only through use of these Maxwell relations that you can actually see that these things must be the case. Now, uh, for practical applications, uh, uh, we still don't know how, how this is useful, right? But at the end of this series of videos in which uh, we still have to derive the Maxwell relation for the Helmholtz energy and the Gibbs energy, once we do those four, then we'll look at a variety of applied examples to see how useful these things really are. Okay, so hopefully that will be compelling. In the next video, we're going to uh, try to uh, come up with a Maxwell relation for the Helmholtz energy.